पृथ्वीरंद्र ज्ञाजनाशलाकय चक्षुरमिल तस्मागुरव नम नमा विष्णुपादा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदातस्वामी नमने नमस्ते सरस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाशतादेशतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादिगौ भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा सो वी वेलकम एवरी वन फॉर टू डेज रीडिंग वी आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम थर्ड चैप्टर वर्स नंबर सिक्सटीन ऑनवर्ड्स प्रवर्ति चक्रम नानुवर्त्याय अघायु इंद्रिया रामो मोगम पाथा सजीवती माय डियर अर्जुन वन डज नॉट फॉलो इन ह्यूमन लाइफ द साइकिल ऑफ सेक्रीफाइस दस एस्टैब्लिश बाय द वेदास सर्टनली लीड्स अ लाइफ फुल ऑफ सेन लिविंग ऑनली फॉर द सेटिस्फैक्शन ऑफ द सेंसेस सच अ पर्सन लिव्स इन वेन पर्पट The Mammonish philosophy of work very hard and enjoy sense gratification is condemned here and by the Lord. Therefore, for those who want to enjoy this material world, the above mentioned cycle of performing yagnas is absolutely necessary. One who does not follow such regulations is living a very risky life, being condemned more and more. By nature's law, this human form of life is specially meant for self-realization in either of the three ways, namely karma yoga, nyana yoga, or bhakti yoga. There is no necessity of rigidly following the performances of the prescribed yagyas for the transcendentalists who are above vice and virtue, but those who are engaged in sense gratification require purification by the above mentioned cycle of yagya performances. There are different kinds of activities. Those who are not Krishna conscious are certainly engaged in sensory sensory consciousness. Therefore, they need to execute pious work. The yagya system is planned in such a way that sensory conscious person may satisfy the desires without becoming entangled in the reaction of sense gratificatory work. The prosperity of the world depends not on our own efforts but on the background arrangement of the supreme lord directly carried out by the demigods. Therefore the yagyas are directly aimed at the particular demigods mentioned in the Vedas. Indirectly, it is the practice of Krishna consciousness, because when one masters the performance of yagna, one is sure to become Krishna conscious. But if by performing yagna one does not become Krishna conscious, such principles are counted as only moral codes. One should not therefore limit his progress only to the point of moral codes, but should transcend them to attain Krishna consciousness. And here, Lord Shri Krishna concludes the discussion on the yagna. and this was it spoke about what happens if one does not follow the yagyas so why did buddha lord buddha abolished the practice of yagya uh, he said this is blind faith how is it possible that by offering by sacrifice and of course at that point of time uh, on the name of yagya animal sacrifice used to happen so of course ahimsa was to be established but one of the other aspect is with that he kind of uh, largely his point of discussion was that you know by animal sacrifice not that your desires will be fulfilled however simultaneously he also rejected the idea because he rejected the vedic scriptures so he rejected the idea of existence of devatas at sector sector but here lord shikrishna is speaking about that how there are elemental personalities of devatas uh, who control certain elements not certain all the elements of this creation and in case you go to an astrologer and he tells you aapka falana dikana grah kharab hai your saturn or something else is disturbed then what you have to do then you offer yagya to please that particular devta that's the point purpose is saying the yagyas are always offered by keeping a particular devta in mind sometimes some people get uh, in dream uh, they get to see snakes 
uh, many times. So then if they consider astrology, astrology say, oh, looks like, you know, there is a Sarp Yoga. You know, you should worship Lord Shiva. I'm just giving some, you know, there are like many, many different, different instances like this. Based on your dreams and based on your astrological chart, you know, you're prescribed to perform Yoga. And the reason is that certain Devta is unhappy. Either from you or from your dynasty, because nobody have acknowledged him, and then he again is prescribed. This is generally how you know the astrologers or the pundits will tell you. And Krishna, is, that's what Prabhupada is writing in the purport, a particular. However, now there is a verse spoken by Narad Muni to the Prachetas in the fourth canto of Bhagavatam. He said, "Yatha taro mulam amul nishchanena." If you offer water to the roots of the tree, then you don't have to worry about the the uh, the, the, the leaves or the twigs of the tree. Everything would be nourished. So rather than being worried about different devatas, etc., rather we serve Krishna. And if we serve Krishna, everyone will be pleased. And how we serve Krishna? For Kali Yuga, Sankirtan Yajna is the best Yajna prescribed. And therefore in one of the purpose before you read a verse Srila Prabhupada quoted by Srila Madhvendra Puri. Where he said, oh, my uh, Gayatri, my Snana, my Brahminical tradition, my Devatas, I offer you respects. Which means Tata Bhai Bhai. I'm not going to give, give pay attention to you. I'm just going to chant Hare Krishna. That was the point here. Alright, let's start our discussion from verse number 17 onwards. Now we are from verse number 17 to 13. Why perform prescribed duties is discussed. 17. Yastu atma ratar evasya atma triptas chamana vaha atmane vacha santushtas tasya karyam navityate. But for one who takes pleasure in the self, whose human life is one of self realization, who is satisfied in the self only, fully satiated for him, there is no duty. Prabhupada's purpose is about what is the purpose of duty. A person who is fully Krishna conscious is fully satisfied by his acts in Krishna consciousness no longer has any duty to perform. Due to his being Krishna conscious, all impiety within him, within him is instantly cleansed, or within is instantly cleansed, an effect of many, many thousands of yajna performances. By such clearing of consciousness, one becomes fully confident of his eternal position in relationship with the Lord. His duty thus becomes self-illuminated by the grace of the Lord. Therefore, he no longer has any obligations to Vedic injunctions. Such a Krishna conscious person is no longer interested in material activities and no longer takes pleasure in material arrangements like wine, woman and similar infatuations. Uh, there is a, a style of living called as Ajgar Pravati, which very very advanced personalities accept to. Ajgar Pravati means like Ajgar. What does, uh, what do you call as Ajgar as? So generally it doesn't move around. It's a huge body and it's weight. Uh, it waits for its victim to come. And if the victim comes, then it devours. So Ajka Pravati of this sadhus or this grace transcendental means they don't even endeavor for their bodily maintenance. They lie at one place and just chant Hare Krishna whole day. Srila Madhavendra Puri actually exhibited this Ajka Pravati. Like that an example is given. For one who is completely situated in transcendence, he does not. For example, if he was hungry, he will not call out for somebody to feed him. He will not go for begging, which is also one dharma of a sadhu in one sense. Uh, for a person who is an ajka pravati, for him it becomes a lower dharma. He, when he will feel hungry, when he will thirsty, he will chant Hare Krishna. Not finishing 16 rounds, but he will chant more. That is the point of being fully Krishna conscious. Such a person does not, that is the verse mentioned, 17th verse indicating to such personalities. 18th verse. A self realized man has no purpose to fulfill in the discharge of his prescribed duties, nor has he any reason not to perform such work, nor has he any need to depend on any other living being. In fact, Krishna becomes dependent on such a personality. That's why Srinathji appeared as Gopal to Madhvendra Puri and told him, you know, I want to be worshipped by you. And that's the point here. Purport. A self-realized man is no longer obliged to perform any prescribed duties, save and accept activities in Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is not in activity either, as will be explained in the following verses. A Krishna conscious man does not take shelter of any person, man or demigod. 
whatever he does in Krishna consciousness is sufficient in the discharge of his obligation. Now, such a person need not perform anything for himself. He does not even worry about his bodily maintenance. But when it comes to service to Krishna, he does everything. So when Srinaji was discovered from, from that particular place, then Srila Madhavendra Puri organized the whole worship. There were festivals that were happening. Now he was not eating the, the feast which were prepared. That was all for Lord Shri Krishna. So I'm just making this point and giving a case study of Madhavendra Puri to tell you it's not that, that such a Krishna conscious person becomes lazy. Because one perspective, a materialist will say, oh, look at this fellow, so lazy. He cannot even work for his own maintenance. He's not eating food. When it comes to Krishna service, Srila Madhavendra Puri organized such a big program for a month long, more than a month long. Every day there was a chapan book which was prepared for uh, Srinachi. And a proper worship uh, you know, protocol was established. And he personally walked from Vindavan to Jagannath Puri to get the uh, Chandan. Because Lord Shri Krishna wanted. So this is not referring to a mode of ignorance people. Huh? The, this two verses referring to fully Krishna Kashmis. Uh, in transcendence, they have no material responsibility or duty. But they entirely serve Krishna. That's the point here. Text number 19. Tasma dasaktaha satatam karyam karma samachara asakto hi acharan karma param apnoti purushaha. Tasma, therefore, matlab dhyan diji abap. Yape bhagwan shri Krishna apni chacha ko conclude karaha. Therefore, O Arjuna, without being attached to the fruits of activities, one should act as a matter of duty. For by working without attachment, one attains the Supreme. So we are not at that level of Ajga Pravati or fully Krishna consciousness described in 17th and 18th verse. So at our level, work is the means of deliverance. If we do not perform work, we will be lazy. Forget about serving Krishna. So here Krishna says, perform your duty, perform your work uh, or your actions as a matter of duty but do not be attached to the fruits of your result. Puppet. The Supreme is the personality of Godhead for the devotees and liberation for the impersonals. A person therefore acting for Krishna or in Krishna consciousness under proper guidance and without attachment to the result of work is certainly making progress towards the Supreme Goal of Life. Arjuna is told that he should fight in the battle of Kurukshetra for the interest of Krishna because Krishna wanted him to fight. To be a good man or a non-violent man is a personal attachment. But to act on behalf of the Supreme is to act without attachment for the result. That is perfect action of the highest degree recommended by the Lord. Vedic rituals like prescribed sacrifices are performed for purification of impious activities that were performed in the field of sense gratification. But action in Krishna consciousness is transcendental to the reactions of good or evil work. A Krishna conscious person has no attachment for the result, but acts on behalf of Krishna alone. He engages in all kinds of activities, but is completely non-attached. There is no work a devotee cannot do. And even if he gets tremendous success, still his duty does not get affected. Now he doesn't think that I've got enough, now let me enjoy. That's the point here. Text number 20. Therefore in Krishna consciousness, there is nothing called as big seva, small seva. Those who call big seva and small seva are those who see the duality. Krishna does not see the duality. You are a sweeper in the kitchen or you are the cook or you are the person who is giving a Sunday feast class. From Krishna's perspective, there is no big devotee and small devotee. From Krishna's perspective, from the perspective of transcendence, everyone is rendering equivalent service. Always remember the example of uh, what is a squirrel and the monkeys having an argument when while building a bridge, Ram Situ. All right. Text number 20. Krishna gives an example. Karmaneva hi samsiddhim asita janaka daya loka sangraham eva api sampasyam kartumar hasi. Krishna gives an example of such a, who lived a life like this. <coughs> o Arjuna, kings such as Janak attained perfection solely by performance of prescribed duties. Therefore, just for the sake of educating the people in general, you should perform your work. Papat, king like Janak was selfless souls. Consequently, they had no obligation to perform the prescribed duties in the Vedas. He was a Kshatriya, which means Kshatriya Dharma. 
Nonetheless, they performed all prescribed duties just to set examples for the people in general. Janak was the father of Sita, father-in-law of Lord Ram, being a great devotee. He was transcendently situated because he was the king of Mithila. He had to teach his subjects how to perform prescribed duties. Lord Krishna and Arjuna, the Lord's eternal friend, had no need to fight in the battle. But they fought to teach people in general that violence is also necessary in a situation where good arguments fail. Before the battle of Kurukshetra, every effort was made to avoid the war, even by the Lord. But the other party was determined to fight. So for such a right cause, there is a necessity for fighting. Although one who is situated in Krishna consciousness may not have any interest in the world, he still works to teach the public how to... Please mark this is a very, very important point. Although one who is situated in Krishna consciousness may not have any interest in the world, he still works to teach the public how to live and how to act. Experienced persons in Krishna consciousness can act in such a way that others will follow. And this is explained in the following verse. Now, this is something very important for those who have been practicing Krishna consciousness, who are acknowledged by others as senior devotees, or who claim to be senior devotees, they have to very strictly follow this understanding, or have to understand this. They have to act in such a way, uh, or they have to teach the public how to live and how to act. If their demeanor, if their behavior is not appropriate, what the younger generation would follow? If they argue, they speak rashly, they don't practice the principles of Krishna consciousness, they don't chant, they don't have visible sadhana, etc., etc., then imagine what the younger generation will take a cue from. That's the point Prabhupada is saying. Although one is situated in Krishna consciousness, may not have any interest in the world, so the devotee will think, oh, I'm chanting 24 hours, why should I just bother about waking up in the morning for Mangalati? For me, Mangalati is going on 24 by 7. I am taking the of the Lord in the mind, in the heart of, you know, in the altar of my mind every day. What is the need for it? But you do it, then others, if seniors cannot get up in the morning, so what is my need? Similarly, our behavior, etiquette, everything counts. So before you ask anyone else to do a service, you should show them by your example that you also do a service. That is a point being highlighted here, very important. Text number 21, and that goes on ahead with the very famous verse of Bhagavad Gita. Yadadashrati Sheshtas Tatta Devataro Janaha Sayat Pramanam Kurute Lokasa Danuvartane Whatever action a great man performs, common man follow. And whatever standard he sets by exemplary acts, all the world pursues. Puppet. People in general always require a leader who can teach the public by practical behavior. A leader cannot teach the public to stop smoking if he himself smokes. Lord Chaitanya said that a teacher should behave properly before he begins teaching. One who teaches in that way is called Acharya or ideal teacher. Therefore, a teacher must follow the principles of Shastra to teach the common man. The teacher cannot manufacture rules against the principles of revealed scriptures. The revealed scriptures like Manusmita and similar others are considered to be the standard books to be followed by human society. Thus, the leader's teaching should be based on the principles of such standard Shastras. One who desires to improve himself must follow the standard rules as they are practiced by the great teachers. The Srimad Bhavatam also affirms that one should follow in the footsteps of great devotees, and that is a way of progress on the path of spiritual realization. The king or the executive head of a state, father, school teacher are all considered to be natural leaders <coughs> of the innocent public. All such natural leaders have a great responsibility to their dependents because they must be conversant with standard books of moral and spiritual course. Everyone should know, just like a man and a woman taking to Krishna consciousness or living according to Vedic culture, they should know how to behave with each other. Uh, if they don't know how to behave with each other, what their kids going to do about it? There's no point sitting in the Vyasas and talking about how the world is becoming contaminated and corrupted when your dealings and themselves are not appropriate and transparent. So that's the point being mentioned here. All Whoever has any dependent but becomes the natural leaders. And some example natural leaders Prabhupada gave, parents, school teachers, the head of the state, etc., etc. And they have to be extremely careful. Uh, they have to be cautious about their behavior, their speech, their actions, because that is what people are going to take a cue from. People don't pay much attention to what you speak in the class. People pay more attention to how you act and behave with others. And that's where they learn from. So this is what we need to be cautious about. That's what is being mentioned here. And therefore, Krishna is in, uh, uh, 
telling Arjuna, Arjuna, your act of going to the forest, do you understand what will happen? The whole Shatya Dharma will collapse. They'll quote an example, just like Arjuna walked to the forest, they would hide their, uh, you know, what is a fear of fight or not performing the duty by taking an example of yours. Just like in a court, when they have to pass a judgment, sometimes they take an example, see, in so-and-so case, such judgment was passed. So taking a cue from that judgment, we are passing the judgment now. That's how the judgments are given. Similarly, Krishna is saying, Arjuna, if you do this, you walk away from your dharma, from your duty, which citizen do you expect would follow the order of the king? When the king will tell you, act according to your dharma, according to your varnashrama, nobody will act. They'll say, we give up. There is no, there is no meaning of your, you know, kula dharma, raj dharma, all will stop. The husband will walk away from the relationship with the wife. The kids will not take care of the parents. You know, the subordinates will not listen to the king. Who would follow? And they would say, if Arjuna can do it, why can't we do it? That is the point. Therefore, even if there is no need for you to fight, but you still have to fight because you are in a responsible position. Text number 22. At least you cannot walk away after coming onto the battlefield. If you had to walk away, that had to be done when the negotiations were going on. Because of you, the battle, you know, people have assembled here. Now you cannot. Just like after getting married, you cannot say, Oh, I wish I could be Brahmachari. Can I become Brahmachari now? No, Baba, your patta is done. Now you stay married. That cannot be done. You have to dutifully follow your dharma now. That's the point here. Text number 22. Nāme pātāsi kartavyam trishu loke shukinchana nāna vāptam vāptavyam vartaiva chakarmani O son of Prata, there is no work prescribed for me within all the three branches systems. Nor am I in want of anything, nor have I any need to obtain anything, yet I am engaged in prescribed duties. Uh, to emphasize the point, now Krishna gives an own example. First he gave an example of Janak Maharaj, then he said the importance of a leader following his own words and actions for the general mass. And now Krishna said, even I perform my prescribed duties, I got nothing to do with this world. Puppet. The Lord is described in the Vedic literature as follows. I'm reading the translation. The Supreme Lord is the controller of all of the controllers and he's the greatest of all the diverse planetary leaders. Everyone is under his control. All entities are delegated with particular power only by the Supreme Lord. They are not supreme themselves. He is also worshipable by all demigods and is the supreme director of all directors. Therefore, he is transcendental to all kinds of material leaders and controllers and is worshipable by all. There is no greater than him and is the supreme cause of all causes. He does not possess a bodily form like that of an ordinary living entity. There is no difference between his body and his soul. He is absolute. All his senses are transcendental and any one of his senses can perform the action of other senses. We have already repeated this. Brahmaji also says in Brahma Samhita. Therefore no one is greater than him or equal to him. His potencies are multifarious and thus his deeds are automatically performed as a natural sequence. Shweta Shvtara Upanishad since everything is in full opulence in the Lord and is existing in full truth, there is no duty for the Lord to perform. One who must receive, one who must receive the results of work has some designated duty. But one who has nothing to achieve within the three military planetary words certainly has no duty. Right? Making sense? Obligation. Obligation comes when there is an expectation for result. For example, you want to eat. Then you are obliged to work. Unless you work, how will you get food to eat? But somebody who does not depend on any eating uh, or, you know, ahar, nidra, mahatunam or anything for that reason, then he is free soul, na? He has no, nothing that binds him. That is the point Prabhupada is making. And yet Lord Krishna is engaged on the battlefield of Kurukshetra as the leader of the Kshatriyas because Kshatriyas are duty bound to give protection to the distressed. Although he is above all the regulations of the revealed scriptures, he does not do anything that violates the revealed scriptures. Very interesting point. Now, Prabhupada is saying, Krishna, when Krishna says, I don't need anything, yet I, I perform my duty. So, Prabhupada is saying, see, Krishna, uh, you know, he says, battle, the leader of the Kshatriyas, because Kshatriyas are duty bound to give protection to the distress. So, when Duryodhana and Arjuna had went to Krishna, now Krishna, had, had, he, didn't, he wasn't dependent on Arjuna and Duryodhana for anything. See, for example, let's say somebody from the street comes and asks you for something. Are you obliged to fulfill his desire? Yes or no? Yes or no? If your son comes to you, are you obliged to fulfill his desire? 
because you are also dependent on your son there's a mutual dependence but for no you know from some buddy unknown to you comes from the street and tells i need this this from you you have nothing to do with it similarly if you see arjuna duryodhan coming to krishna uh krishna will say in the ninth chapter sama sarveshu bhuteshu i see everyone is the equal vision he doesn't depend on arjuna duryodhan for anything yet krishna fulfilled their desire why because as a kshatriya he had to follow the kshatriya code of conduct if somebody comes to ask you for help then you should not say no that is the point yet kshatriya yet krishna performed his duty but he did not he doesn't have to take anything from both the parties text number 23 यदि अहम न वर्ते अहम जातु कर्मणि अतंद्रत ममावर्तमानते मनुष्या पार्थ सर्वशा कृष्ण से वाई आई डू सो इफ आई एवर फेल टू एंगेज इन केयरफुली परफॉर्मिंग प्रिस्क्राइब ड्यूटीज ओ पार्थ सर्टनली ऑल मैन वुड फॉलो माई पार्थ इमेजिन कृष्ण वुड हैव सेड नो टू बोथ दुर्योधन एंड अर्जुन आई एम नॉट गोन हेल्प यू वाई शुड हेल्प यू गेट लॉस्ट फ्रॉम यूर देन ऑल द शत्रिज वुड हैव सेट ओ then i am also not obliged to assist people if krishna can say no to help then i can also say no to help that is a point here but but in order to keep the balance of social tranquility for progress in spiritual life there are traditional family usages meant for every civilized man all the such rules and regulations are for the condition souls not for krishna because he descended to establish the principles of religion he followed the prescribed rules otherwise common man would follow in, in his footsteps because he is the greatest authority so some people who think bhagavad gita belongs to hindu dharma they would think yada yada hi dharma siya krishna came to establish hindu dharma that is not he came for what dharma he came to establish to you know to teach everyone how to perform their duty duty means according to varnashrama according to their propensity everyone should engage in brahmanic kshatriya vaishya shudra responsibilities that's the point here otherwise common man would follow in his footsteps because he is the greatest authority from the shrimad bhagavatam it is understood that lord shri krishna was performing all the religious duties at home and out of home as required as a of a householder now lord shri krishna comes in different all the different varnas also and ashramas also to teach you know he appeared as vamana dev and he taught that how to sustain your life by begging now krishna has appeared ram has appeared as kshatriya krishna has appeared he appeared in a vaishya community he taught about how to live as a vaishya and then he also taught how to live as a kshatriya so that is what is dharma dharma is not hindu dharma islam dharma krishna dharma their religions dharma and religions are not at all the same word text number 24 usse deyo me loka na kariya karma chid aham शंकर से कर्त उपहनिया मिमा प्रजा इफ आई डू नॉट परफॉर्म प्रिस्क्राइब ड्यूटीज ऑन दिस वर्ल्ड वुड बी पुट टू रिनेशन आई वुड बी द कॉज ऑफ क्रिएटिंग अन वॉन्टेड पॉपुलेशन एंड आई वुड देर बाई डिस्ट्रॉय द पीस ऑफ ऑल लिविंग मींग्स इन द फर्स्ट चैप्टर अर्जुन गिव अ रीजन माई डियर लॉर्ड इफ आई फाइट आई फियर बिकॉज ऑफ विच मी वर्ण शंकरा वुड हैपन फैमिली ट्रेडिशन वुड बी डिस्ट्रॉयड एंड वॉट इज क्वेश्चन सेंग इफ आई डिड नॉट परफॉर्म माई प्रिस्क्राइब ड्यूटी ऑल दिस वर्ल्ड वुड बी पुट टू रिनेशन i would be the cause of creating unwanted populations so arjuna you thinking by running away from your prescribed duty your kula dharma will be protected and stri would be protected however you fail to understand that if you do not perform because of which whatever reasons you have given would actually come to truth not by not doing it but what a sankara means unwanted population sounds familiar all right which disturbs the peace of the general society sounds very familiar In order to stop the social disturbance, there are prescribed rules and regulations by which the population can automatically become peaceful and organized for spiritual progress in life. When Lord Shri Krishna descends naturally, he deals with such rules and regulations in order to maintain the prestige and necessity of such important performances. The Lord is the Father of all living entities, and if the living entities are misguided, indirectly the responsibility goes to the Lord. Therefore. very important point ha huh? therefore whenever there is a general disregard of regulated principles the lord himself descends and corrects the society therefore i am just adding a point lord time and again either appears himself as a father to correct his lost sons and daughters or as he sends his representatives to teach us the way back home back to god and or and also as facilitated with the scriptures for the same purpose 
We should, however, note carefully that although we have to follow the first steps of the Lord, we still have to remember that we cannot imitate Him. Do not get married more than once. That's the point, huh? Krishna only can get married 16,000 times and plus. Hare Krishna, living entity. If at this period you'll function, this will go away. We cannot imitate the Lord by lifting Govardhan Hill as the Lord did in his childhood. It is impossible for any human being. We have to follow his instruction, but we have but we may not imitate him at any time. Srimad Bhagavatam will read the last one. One should simply follow the instruction of the Lord and his empowered servants. Their instructions are all good for us, and any intelligent person will perform them as instructed. However, one should guard against trying to imitate their actions. One should not try to drink the ocean of poison in imitation of Lord Shiva. We should always consider the position of the Ishwaras or those who can actually control the movements of the sun and moon as superior. Without such power, one cannot imitate the Ishwaras who are super powerful. Lord Shiva drank poison to the extent of swelling an ocean, but if any common tries to drink even a fragment of such poison, he will be killed. There are many pseudo devotees of Lord Shiva who want to indulge in smoking ganja and similar intoxicating drugs, forgetting that by so imitating the acts of Lord Shiva, they are calling death very near. Similarly, there are some pseudo devotees of Lord Krishna who prefer, who prefer to imitate the Lord in his Ras Leela or dance of love, forgetting their inability to lift Govardhan Hill. It is best, therefore, that one try to imitate, one not try to imitate the powerful, but simply follow the instructions. Nor should one try to occupy their posts without qualification. Please highlight this. Two things Prabhupada is saying very strongly. Do not imitate and do not try to occupy the post without qualification. Which means, first of all, what is my adhikar? That is a point. And do not imitate. There are so many incarnations of God without the power of the Supreme Godhead. Like that. Text number 25. Saktaha karmani avidvam so yatha kurvanti bharata Guryad vidvam tatha shaktas chikirshu loka sangraham loka sangraha which means people in general very beautiful verse huh? well, word actually as ignorant perform the duties with attachment to results the learned may simply act but without attachment for the sake of leading people on the right path one way of preaching people the right path is by words, by teaching them, educating them. But better than that uh, way, better than teaching through your words, better than that by setting an example. And Lord is saying both you have to do, like, you know, so that people understand what you are speaking is practical. Puppet, a person in Krishna consciousness and a person not in Krishna consciousness are differentiated by different desires. That's the only difference. It's not that uh, within this lifetime they get two extra hands. That is not guaranteed. Huh? You may get two extra legs in the next life if you don't remember Krishna and at the end of life. If you remember your puppy, there's a lot of possibility of getting two extra legs at the end of life or in the next birth. So the difference between uh, you know demons and divine is desires. A Krishna conscious person does not do anything which is not conducive to development of Krishna consciousness. He may even act exactly like the ignorant person who is too much attached to material activities. But one is engaged in such activities for the satisfaction of the sense gratification, whereas the other is engaged for the satisfaction of Krishna. Therefore, the Krishna conscious person is required to show the people. Please mark. Therefore, the Krishna conscious person is required to show the person how to act and how to engage the results of action for the purpose of Krishna consciousness. So when Srila Prabhupada was attempting to go to America, he was living in the township of uh, Moraji. And there the neighbor said, Swamiji, in such an old age, you're having a desire for a foreign visit? Prabhupada said, Are, what are you talking? Of course not. I just want to fulfill the desire of my special master. The man said, oh, if you want to fulfill the desire of your special master, I heard you telling me before, he wants this Bhagavatam culture to be established. Send the copies of your Bhagavatam. Why are you insisting to go? And then Prabhupada said, which is almost similar to these last three lines which you read. 
Therefore, the Krishna conscious person is required to show the people how to act. And Prabhupada said, there are two kinds of Bhagavad, Bhagavad book and Bhagavad person. The book teaches you how to live a life. A Bhagavad person sets an example. He teaches you that how Bhagavad principle or lifestyle is practical. Therefore, the Krishna conscious person is required to show the person how to act and how to engage the results of action for the purpose of and how to engage the result. Both the things are of action for the purpose of Krishna kindness. Brahmacharis are supposed to set the standard renunciation by living a simple life, by engaging their mind and senses and hearing about Krishna and reading about Krishna and serving in a menial position. Grahasthas are supposed to set an example of renunciation by doing regular charity. Everyone has to follow the principles of renunciation. Uh, either you be Grahastha or be Brahmachari. But the principles or the details of renunciation varies. If a grahastha, you know, goes into depositing but lives a simple life, people will call him a charlatan. What kind of joke it is. You can't give a penny to the temple for the purpose of preaching of Krishna consciousness, but you pretend to be a Krishna's devotee. You know, there are people like this who can give and come and give very good, good classes, quote many verses. But the community says, Are bolta bota hai, karta kuch nahi hai. So that is a point. We should be careful of this mentality. And this is a flaw and we need to rise above it. That's okay. We all have different, different flaws. So this is where we conclude here for today. I just noticed a 7.15 or 7.16 precisely. So this discussion will continue about why we should perform prescribed duty, what is importance. This is up to verse number 32. We have read up to verse number 25. We shall continue our discussion on the good Monday morning. Everyone loves Monday morning, particularly those who go to office. <laughs> so, all right. With that, we conclude for today. Jagaduru Shila Prabhupada Ki Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Aap Sabi Ka Bahad Bahad Dhanyavad Is Bhagavad Gita Reading Group Me Join Karne Ke Liye.